If you're one of the regular buyers at a music press, then chances are you probably think you've got a pretty good idea of what's happening musically in Britain right now. You'll know that every fad and cult is jumped on and milked until the next one's unearthed and off you go again. But one scene has been thriving for the past four years, unaided by TV and radio and most of the music press. Today, 20th Century Box goes part of the way in uncovering the underground fun and fanatics of the music called jazz funk. And if you think you're in for something as ordinary as disco and roller skates, then stay put and wise up. You ain't seen nothing yet. 20th Century On a lousy wet Friday night, the streets of Southgate in North London are filling up with people decked out in what for most of us would be beachwear. They are the followers of Jazz Funk, one of London's biggest underground music scenes. Apart from their rituals and ways of dressing, Jazz Funk music now has an identifiable style in its own right, having developed from black American music of the last 25 years. Throughout the 60s, black American soul music became enormously popular. For the first time, black and white audiences in this country were dancing together to labels like Motown and artists like The Supremes and The Temptations. By the end of the decade, soul groups like this were becoming increasingly bland. Their appeal was more to cabaret audiences than to the young people in clubs who'd originally bought their records. By the early 70s, many black music fans in this country had become devoted to a different style, the earthier street sound of soul veteran James Brown, who from the late 50s had been making a music he called funk. In the last few years, the major new influence in funk music has been jazz. With the commercial decline of modern jazz in America, many of the best musicians switched to playing a more popular dance music. So funk became jazz funk. For bands like Earth, Wind & Fire, the fusion of jazz and soul have been very successful. Jazz funk music like this now has a growing army of fanatical followers in this country. Amongst them are Junior Fairweather, a computer programmer, Kevin and Eddie Stokes, who both work in shops, and Phil Presbury, a van driver. They all come from Brixton. They have been fans of black music for years and now follow funk. To them, it's simply the best dance music played by the best musicians. But they're unlikely to hear much funk on the radio or read about it in the music press, except for a few sympathetic magazines and fanzines. So they spend hours in specialist record shops like the Solar in Brixton Station, searching for whatever is hot in funk that week. This time-consuming and expensive devotion is typical of funk fans in this country. Although funk is traditionally American, they believe that their tastes are now ahead of the fans on the other side of the Atlantic. 
our search is really for quality music and one of the first things I do when I pick up a record cover is have a look and see what artists are playing on there. You know, that's the first thing. Um, we even look at producers. We, we go into it quite, you know, in some depth actually. Sometimes uh, we know more than the people in the record shops. Some of the American artists have commented when they've come over, they, they just haven't believed the scene over here. I mean, that really does underline the fact, you know, that the actual artists are actually saying things like, you know, you're way ahead of us in the States, you know. Sold out, I'm afraid. But that's nice, isn't it? Like all good things. Yeah, that's yeah. Yeah. Is it? I only discovered it by We've chance. We've got hoops <laughs> upside your head again <laughs> on 12 inch. It's definitely yeah. the funk capital. We're so far ahead, even of America, which is where most of the tunes come from. Funk has always been overshadowed by and confused with disco music. Until a few years ago, the terms were almost interchangeable. But with the enormous popularity of Saturday Night Fever, a wave of disco records came out and funk purists disowned this style of music. Funk kept going as an exclusive underground scene. What was the main difference then between what all the disco boom people were liking and what you were doing at the time? Uh, well, it was a new thing for a lot of people. They, they try to start getting into dancing and there's a lot of silly things going on, like, you know, dancing schools and it, and it wasn't a natural thing. And there was a lot of... Got a lot of white artists making bad disco records as far as we're concerned, you know. Uh, and they was having hits and the better stuff, like, wasn't coming through, you know, that's one thing, not like, we had the needle about it. Yeah, and uh, the way people talked about disco, and we were associated with it, you know, like, uh, disco thing, I think it's badly put across. It looks like to me as well, there's this kind of really self-contained world going on, because every other youth movement seems to have an opposing one, skins and whatever you have, you know. You don't seem to have any bother from outside at no, all. No, no. You know, you don't get any sort of trouble at all, any of our dudes. I mean, some of the clubs we go to, the bouncers, I mean, they just stay out near the door and keep a very low profile which is one of the things the DJs sort of stand out for as well. You know, there's just no trouble, so there's no need for anything like that at all. The centre of the funk scene is not in the concert halls, as few American bands ever tour this country regularly. The music lives in a small circuit of clubs around outer London. In these clubs, fans have formed themselves into groups called tribes. We're going to get down there early, like, huh? Yeah, just want to get in Have a good drink, like. Junior and his friends were founders of the Brixton Frontline. And for the Frontline, even an evening in the pub revolves around funk. Hey? No, I ain't been, um, confirmed it yet. Like, he was supposed to be on that Northern thing. Yeah, you, you've got to understand it, really. You, you can't just walk in one day and say, right, I'm going to be a funk follower. I'm going to start going to the dudes. You either know about these things, you, you buy the, the papers advertising, you know what DJs to follow, or you don't. It really is an underground scene. You know, although we can talk to people, you know, miles away who are into it and they know what we're talking about, I couldn't talk to the bloke next door. He wouldn't have a clue what I'm talking about. <laughs> Where's that, Steve? Oh, it's all basically into the music sort of thing. I mean, we've been going to clubs and discos, what they call them, discos, for seven or eight years now. So the tribes have been going for about four years. So we sort of you know, decided that it's about time we got you know, the same uh, <laughs> the names on the map. So we sort of formed the front line. <laughs> yeah, 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 I did as it goes, yeah. yeah. She's gone down Oxford Street, isn't she? We follow certain DJs because we know they're going to produce, uh, well, not just music or whatever, or live entertainment, because most of them are entertainers as well, but there's going to be a certain scene there, certain people are going to turn up, there's going to be a nice atmosphere, and that really makes it, you know. We don't have any problems sort of travelling. We don't really travel very far and sort of like have bad times because, for example, the, you know, the Rio at Didcot, which is about 65 miles one way, I mean, it's right in the middle of nowhere, so anybody that goes there is only going there for a good time. 
It means a lot to me. Um, it's it's like a membership of a club, although there are, in fact, no members as such. It's just a collective gathering. But uh, whenever we go out, we're not just sort of like individuals. We're part of the front line as such. Two outside monitors, the uh, centre point will be here, and the two back monitors face the back end. So if anyone's playing around at the back, they can hear what's going on. The Royalty in Southgate is one of the dozen clubs that provide the sort of music that draws fateful fans from miles around. Tonight there's a special reunion and tribes have come from all over the South East. One of the handful of club disc jockeys who has been directly involved in the growth of the tribes is Chris Hill. I was at a club in Ilford called the Lacey Lady. There was another DJ called Chris Brown had a club in Camberley called French's and various other clubs with DJs working at them, that we decided we wanted to put on an all-dayer where all, all the kids from each of the clubs would all turn up and we'd all spend the whole day together dancing to the one style of music. In order that they um, express their individuality, these kids from the different clubs went as tribes from those clubs. So when these kids started to call themselves the Paddington Soul Patrol, the Frontline Brixton, what, what have you, you know. And that's where the tribal thing came out of. It's, it's very much, um, it's an identity to do with the area that they come from. They tend to identify with that area. But it's not, once they get to the gig, there's no rivalry. I mean, the basis of it is, is a sort of non-rivalry. And that's why we came up with, we coined the expression, the family. Because if you put all the tribes together, you've got the family of tribes. And that, it really, it grew out of that. Like other fanatical tribes, the Brixton Frontline are naturally heading for the royalty. They've come in uniform. We called the Frontline. We sort of recognise with the Frontline as being a sort of military statement. You know, wherever you read of the Frontline, it's normally to do with troops, i.e. Uh, Rhodesia, for example. So we're into a sort of military dress lately. There's a tribe called the Backwater Bruces, would you believe, and they've never ever been to Australia, but, you know, basically everything they talk about is Australia. You know, there's a tribe called the Bananas, who wear sort of T-shirts with bananas on. One of the other tribes at the Royalty is the Funkmaster Generals from Ilford. Well, we've been together for a long time, we've been, been together for about six years, all, together. all went to the same school. And uh, there's a lot of other tribes about, and about eight months ago, was it? We decided we should have a name. So we formed a group called the Funkmaster Generals. What's yeah. special about the atmosphere of the it's so friendly. Everybody just wants to enjoy the music. You know, they just here enjoy themselves. No, no, it's no trouble. There's no trouble or nothing. It's just everyone's there for the music. It sounds. You get on the floor and dance. Yeah. Off the dance floor, it's difficult to pick out a funk fan in the way you could spot a heavy metal headbanger or a skinhead. But the royalty on Funk Night has a world of its own. As well as the uniforms, tribes make themselves known with banners draped from the balcony. Those without a tribal uniform can buy their own off the peg funk t shirts and badges. On the dance floor, there won't be much room for dancing, but the tribes can still find a way to get noticed.
Much of the work of creating the right atmosphere at a funk gig is done by the DJs. Tonight, three are working at the Royalty. Sean French, who opened the evening, followed by Froggy and Chris Hill. For them and the funk fans, DJing involves much more than just putting on the records. I think Chris Hill started it all off. Yeah. He's getting G and people up to do outrageous things. Um, <laughs> pyramids, people just climbing on top of each other, get as high as they can go, so they all fall down. Basically, it's all pretty stupid, but it's a really good laugh. We have our first naked body! Most of DJs like me spend an awful lot of time finding the right kind of music, searching out the stuff to play at gigs, um, being the first or um, one of the first to play stuff over from the States or from, from English bands and introducing the kids to that music and, and promoting it. Then there's also, we also have a role at, at the gig itself, which is more than just playing records. I mean, it is to engender in the event the feeling that it is an event. Um, we are employed to create an environment and, and create a scene. And it, in a way, it's almost like being um, a kingpin in, in a band. All the tribes at the Royal East spent the previous weekend at Caistown near Great Yarmouth. Weekend events like this have become a regular part of the funk scene and now take place four times a year. We came up with the idea, which we discussed with one of the promoters, Showstoppers, uh, of a, a weekend event where we would take over a holiday camp and uh, start, say, on a Friday and go right around till Sunday night and, and give them a sort of complete three days saturation diet of music, plus a lot of fun as well. <laughs> Everyone gets here and it's just excitement. Like from the moment you're going, you sort of there's vibes going straight away. Like well take us for example, like we meet um the last coast we had our own coach. Now we got on the coach, we have a sing song like, on the way there. We've all got air front line gear on. As soon as you reach the camp, it's the same everywhere. All around the camp everyone's out and about. Caravan doors are open. Everyone's great to see each other. You know they're all your type of people there. So it's one great big friendly relationship going on between each other. So when we get them out of the, their normal environment, take them to a holiday camp for three days, it then gets very weird and they start behaving in totally different ways. They dress very peculiar for three days and they behave in very strange ways. And we organise all kinds of silly events and um, they've probably been the most successful thing of the lot. At the end of it, they feel totally committed to part of this family and they are then, they're like veterans of some campaign. I mean, the whole thing is a crusade. The whole thing about the music is a crusade. And it has a, almost like a religious fervour. Who remembers the first time we ever went to Caistown? Who remembers? Who remembers when we went down to Caistown? Who remembers last week in Caistown? The atmosphere of Caistown is carried over to the royalty.
here in London town. We got bands that are making the records for us. Some of them are here tonight. A few members are lighting the world around there with you. All right. How many people come from London town? With this sort of following for funk, it's not surprising that the fans have started forming their own bands. One is Light of the World, and its members have always been regulars at the Royalty. <laughs> Reggae music until a few years ago, there was a strong feeling that homegrown bands couldn't produce records that compared with imports from Jamaica. The same type of prejudice has dominated the funk scene. To many fans, funk meant American music. As in reggae, British funk bands have broken through this snobbery because they are closer to their fans and write songs that are relevant to life in this country. Light of the World are one part of a new wave of London bands that are emerging from the British funk scene. Actually, it was good because after we did one or two gigs, because we didn't go on stage with the same attitude that a visiting uh, American band would, but rather we went on as ourselves and Although we were playing the music we were playing, we showed people that uh, we were existing in the same environment as them and could relate to the same things by the way we'd speak on stage, our whole approach. You know, we did manage to build up this report with the audience. Uh, I think it's like it's a new generation now. I mean, our music is you know, it's practically like new wave funk, whereas like the punk scene come out, it's sort of a new wave music, you know, sort of changing the whole rock scene. As is sort of the same thing. I mean, before it was like James Brown, the Fatback Band, whereas now it's you know a whole new thing, and all and all, all of it's coming from Britain. The, the whole it's a whole new sound. Lyrically, everything's changing, and attitudes are changing as well. And people are getting into it. It's a sort of real underground scene, and hopefully, it will sort of open up. Like American groups, not all British funk bands rely on live performances for commercial success. As the club circuit is so strong, a band can break entirely because of success on records. Lynx are another band from North London. Sketch and David Grant are the founder members of the band. They released their first single, You're Lying, on their own label and copies changed hands for up to ten pounds. Top row, top row, I've lost my channels. They've now signed to a major record company and had a chart success with the same single. Lovely. Yep. Yeah. So it's a bang. Well, see, the first band that I was in, we used to, we used to gig around a bit, but to tell you the truth, um, Lynx, as an entity, decided that we didn't want to gig until we had something going because a lot of the gigs that bands get offered are toilets. I mean, like, you go in and you play the gig and you don't get money afterwards or you go and you take, like, 1,300 people on stage, you know, like, 36-piece brass section and the stage would be about as big as the chair you're sitting on, you know? And it would be quite difficult. It's just a hassle. It's just uh, very expensive because generally funk bands have lots of people. Not like rock bands, I mean, when was the last time you saw a three-piece funk band? Yeah. There you go. And so, gigs gigs are easy to get, but for the money that you're getting paid, it's, it's I won't say it's not worth it, it just isn't really, really economical at the lower end of the scale. That's another way of saying it's not worth it, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. In Britain, at least, uh, the tribes are looking 
for a focal point. They want a British funk band at the moment. They identify one with another and the thing that unites them is the music. This is another reason why funk is, is totally multiracial because people are united not by a particular ideology or a particular style of dress, they're united by the music. Everybody seems to have had their chance, like punk rock has had their chance at media highlights. Reggae had its chance at getting the media, and now it's heavy metal is having its chance at getting the media, and at last it seems that jazz funk is starting to have its chance. So it's our chance to rise and shine. Not us as a group, but us as a movement. Check that back. Hey, so brand new agitator. Fresh off the press, you're the first people to hear this. Now you're at the Royalty. This is Lynx. One of Jazz Funk's greatest strengths at the moment is that the scene is small, friendly, and underground. But it's inevitable that to be successful, bands like Lynx have to attract a much wider audience. Although funk resisted the commercialisation of disco, is it ready for an influx of new and less committed fans? At the royalty, that was the last thing on anyone's mind. Stop it, stop it. 